Shortly to start with on this session, we've been talking about low volumes for a while now. Very quiet day. James, delay is usually quiet because of the school holidays, but this year even more quieter than usual. $3.2 billion worth of stock being traded, but with a flat result, the Australian market did pretty well, especially in comparison to the US, which was down by 0.8% overnight. I think one of the factors for the Aussie market is that we started to see a bit of support once the Shanghai Composite came online, and it's been in positive ground for most of the session. It's currently up by 0.3%, so that's helped the Aussie market along. And as David mentioned, the turnaround really came from those banking stocks. We saw the defensives once again in favour. That was no surprise with Telstra once again reaching a fresh 52-week high and West Farmers doing well up by 1.1%. But Westpac was the star performer in terms of the banks, up by 1.2%. And coming out to say that it's priced the first ever three-year covered bonds. So it looks like the market liked the sounds of that and really got behind the banking sector today. There were a number of companies which did hit 52-week highs. They were all defensive companies. Telstra Credit Corp, uh, Ramsey Healthcare, all reaching 52-week highs. On the flip side, 52-week lows, once again, we saw weakness in some of the miners. Aquila Mining, uh, Illumina, uh, as well as St. Barbara Mines, all saw 52-week lows, as did Leighton Holdings. So if we have a look at the market today. The sell-off really was in that energy, the industrial and the healthcare space, whereas the banking, the defensive and the high-yielding areas did pretty well. So directly through to our equities, and I suppose even the Australian dollar very much seen quite often as a, a, a proxy if you like for China. I think there is a lot of nervousness around these numbers. So the, the second quarter GDP numbers are going to be watched very closely, especially given that we saw those trade numbers out yesterday where we did see the import side very soft, pointing to a soft domestic economy in China. So the expectations are around about 75 to 7.8%. I think if we got 7.8%, the market would see that as a good result. You have to remember China's gone from double-digit growth, hitting 12 to 13% a number of years ago, now facing da the barrel of uh, seven and a half percent um, or seven point something percent so we're we're closer to half the rates that we've seen you know that we saw hit sort of in 2008 um, and uh, we, we have seen considerable softening so I guess the market a little bit worried but the flip side of that is that we saw inflation numbers earlier on in the week coming out of China and at 2.2 percent there's certainly the capacity to cut interest rates there. There was a little bit about Julia in particular one of the ones in focus down at, down at EDI contract when good news for them it didn't really help them on the market today. We did see uh, down at EDI with some good news out to the market today. A contract win worth about $600 to $800 million over a five and a half year period starting from January 2013. So this is the mining services area, an area where work in hand is at our record levels and we're seeing strong demand from the miners at the moment. And yet the share price of these mining services companies really coming under some pressure today. Now down at EDI shares were down as much as 3% during the session, but by the close had improved, so they were just down by by 0.7%. But some of the other mining services companies under a fair bit of pressure as well. We saw Klug uh, losing 3.4%. We also saw Leighton's losing 3.8%. So it does look like there's a lot of concerns around uh, about global growth and that's really impacting on share price performance. Uh, your thoughts on the stock moving forward, Julia? I know there's been for some time now a lot of interest in mining services. Some you know, still very much in favour, but others starting to say, look, maybe they're starting to look a little expensive because so many people have found favour with them. What we saw during the global financial crisis is that mining service companies did lag behind other miners when we started to see a turn in the share price uh, movement. So when we saw the inflection point coming, they were late to the party. And there is some concern that now that we are seeing a continued weakness in commodity prices, that we're going to see the mining services area and capex by other big miners being impacted. Now, there hasn't been evidence of that as yet, but that's the fear. And that seems to be what started to be priced into these mining services companies. If we have a look at commodity prices, we're seeing iron ore rebar prices at an eight and a half uh, month low. Aluminium prices from February are down by about 20 and a half percent. That's impacted on companies like Illumina on the market today, as well as companies like CSR, which have a large aluminium division. So as long as we see these worries about global growth, the impact on commodity prices, we are going to see a flow on not only to the mining uh, companies, but also around speculation that we could see uh, capex by mining companies also. So being impacted.